and we are live. Welcome to another episode of Unfiltered Bachelor. Me and my buddy Jeff, we are breaking down Dave's series, or Little Dicky series. Dave, I've been drinking. Episode three. Hi, 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 hip, hip, hop, hip, 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 you you can hip, 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 Hypospadius. Hypospadius. That's it. It's a so, bir- it's a birth defect. Con- congenital. 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 congenital sorry. You're good. Congenital dis- You're condition in which the opening of the urethra is on the underside of the penis instead of at the tip. The urethra is the tube through which the urine drains from your bladder and basically your, your body. pee hole is on the underneath. Underneath the. The peepees. Yes. By the way, in case you're wondering why we're having so much fucking trouble with this word, it's H Y P O S P A D I A S. Say so, that yeah. three times fast, guys. Say that one time fast. Just try it. We literally, right before you pushed start, looked up the pronunciation and we still fucked it up. I still fucked. <laughs> Hypospadius. Hypospadius. Uh, that is the name of this episode. Why, why are we saying this? Yeah, that's the name of this episode. Episode three of Dave. Uh, Which, this episode, first of all. Can I really quick? Yeah, you can do what you want. I just want to remind people. Episode one is called The Gander. Two is Dave's first. Looks like episode four is going to be called Somebody, but episode three is Hypospadius. Of all the things. Out of, out of nowhere. Anyway. Of all the things you could be in the world, you're right. be Hypospadius. Oh, man. Although, Jesus. like, you can make some trick shots with that. I like that. Do you think it'd be easier to write your name in the snow? You could write your name double fa- double time, right? I mean, maybe. No, well. If you aimed it right now. Well, I don't think it's saying that you got two holes. You got the one hole, but instead of straight up. He said he, said he does at, have two holes. So just holes. Well, we'll get into that. But I think by what you just read, traditionally, the, one hole. The P comes out of the one hole. Instead, unless, instead of looking you dead on, the, the P hole lo- is looking down. It's a little lower. Yeah. You're He's aim, looking at the floor. It's like when you play. If you ever played like Time Crisis at like an old arcade, yeah, of course. And you're aiming straight, right? But it kind of goes a little to the low, or it goes a little yeah, yeah. to the right, and you're like, "I'm aiming straight. I'm aiming. I know where I'm aiming." But you shoot, and it goes a little yeah. to the left. God damn it! Yeah, you're like, ah, I, I gotta readjust my shit. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> damn it, Bobby! <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> um uh so, hi, first of all, hi, I'm Blake. Hey, Blake. Hi, Blake. Uh Who's we're not gonna Blake? we're not gonna do this a whole bunch of times because we did this a whole bunch. See, you say that I've but then drinking. we drink. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but also that drink though. Um you know? that sauce though. Uh so this is episode three. Y- you you watched it once. How you feeling? Watch it twice. So what I decided was, so this time, like, so if you guys weren't listening to one and two, first off, spoilers, obviously. Second off, go listen to one and two or watch the show yourself. But so with one and two, Blake, you watched them a bunch before we yeah. started. Yeah. Then we watched them together right before we did. Facts know, on facts. Business. Made facts on facts. I watched it once and then watched it once again right before we did this. Okay. And so with this week, I was like, ah, I think I'm going to watch it a bunch. But I decided, I think I'm going to keep, I decided against that. I'm going to keep doing it. I'll watch it once on my own and then once together right before we do it. Right. Because I think that way we'll get a good amount of different takes on it. Facts. We'll get the person who's, you know, watched it a bunch and who really knows the episode and the person who they know it, but there's, you know, they're kind of maybe not seeing it as much. So I'm going to make an admittance. I've only watched it three times. You are a fucking asshole. <laughs> Turn it off. Watch it five more times. I'll come back and we will do we'll this We'll come back show. and re-record. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, and we're back. Uh, <laughs> the first time I watched this episode, I'm going to be honest with you, it was yesterday. I was so excited. I came back from lunch <laughs> and I was decided to watch at work. Yeah. I made a little screen. I have I have a whole bunch of screens going on, but I'm like, I'm going to make a little screen over to my left hand side so that way I can do my, have my little dicky screen. I'm a little dicky screen. My little dicky. My little dicky little screen. My little dicky screen. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to watch it. And then I see immediately it starts off with strong language and ma- mature sexuality or something like that. So it's, it says, you know, TVMA for mature la- uh, mature themes and strong language. Yeah, mature themes and strong language. And I'm like, oh, there can be sex in this episode, I bet. The first scene you kick off with 
is Dave. So he was born in 89, I think. And I think they said it was 01. And it's 01. We come in. So he's all of like 11 or 12. 12, maybe 11 or 12. Whatever. What, whatever month you're born in at that year. Yeah. He's all of 11 or 12. He is preteen. Yeah, he's he he te- he he twelve or thirteen. He he one of them. He's he young. Yeah, he young. He young. He, he young. Call, it's what it's what my, my friends call young blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's what Gata might call a young blood. A young blood. <laughs> he and his dude. The way they started off, and in it's his what room, Mike might call an adolescent. Right. And very much. <laughs> <laughs> a tween, um, yeah, a tween in between. Uh, yeah, so it's dude, Dave in his room. I've never, I've never gone through an experience like this where there's. It starts off with him and two girls who are his age, and they're letting him touch their boobies. So it starts with them lifting up their shirt. Like they're like, right. I, so get, first I off, guess, I get, I guess we'll do this. It's just Dave. Yeah, exactly. That's a, I think a theme too. It's just Dave. So it's clearly like, ooh, this is so taboo and faux pas, so we're going to do this. And, like, you know, so, like, the girls, like, lift up their shirts, and, like, you see Dave, like, reach his hand slowly towards them. Oh, oh. oh. And then he's and then he's touching, he's touching the boobs. And then one of them goes, you can put your hand under the bra if you want. Which, which indicates that, like, he wasn't doing it in the first place. And that, yeah, they lift up their shirts, but... But not their bras. So it's not like girls gone wild going out over here. So what it indicates is it is. They slipped it. They say lift their shirts. They still have their bras on. And he's just like, so, I don't know what the fuck. To so do. basically it is the most awkward preteen learning of each other's bodies. Yes. It's so real. I've never gone through this, though. Uh, have you ever gone through anything like this? So I didn't do that. <laughs> I mean. You ever touch some preteen boobies? No, I'm not saying no, no, not at this. It just sounds very R. Kelly. Let's scratch that from. No, the I'm trying to think like what age when I, you were a teen. I'm trying to think like what age I first felt a boob. I mean, I was definitely in high school. You know, I was I was, I was like 20, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? 21, Blake? maybe. Yeah, you're giving me the courage. I think I'll be honest. It was last week. Last week was the first time I touched a boob. Hi, I'm Blake. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think they were tuning um, in. <laughs> but no, I did have friends, actually, who, like, 13 I had or cool 14. friends like that. I didn't have no cool girlfriends when I was, like, in fucking sixth well, grade. So, like, like, I had a group of like, friends my boobies. who they called themselves, like, the A Club or something. And it was literally just, like, the girls showed the guys their boobs and the guys showed the girls their peens. Their peepees. And then no one did anything. Which good because that's getting a little creepy at that point. But like I was never a part of that. Yeah, I was. I wasn't part of the eighteen. I was not cool enough for that. Yeah. But anyway, so neither did you have. What is this? High. High postpadius. You didn't have that either. Let's call it the hypos because we're the not hypo, going to be able to keep going hypo. with that. The HP baby. But so then it cuts immediately. Oh, but so then the girls go. Okay, you felt us. Now we want to feel you. I don't know why I threw like a weird like southern twang on there. They, we they, won't they don't have like a tell you I mean, what. They're in fucking Pennsylvania. They're in like they're right outside Philly. Right. But like they're like they were like trying to be a and like it's they're like trying to be adult too. Like okay, we let you touch us. So now we get to touch you. And Dave's reaction, you don't know why. At this point you don't know why. We got kind of an idea from the first not couple yet. Episodes. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're not even there yet. We're we're at like He's well, like, "Uh of all things and to then, say, then, of all things, no. Why he, can't they touch? Of all things to say, what's he yell out? Uh, I got AIDS. <laughs> 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 now you have to think like, why would a young man not want a girl to touch his pee pee? Or well, uh, better than that, because they don't give you the time to think that. Because literally, he goes, oh, "I have AIDS." Hi, I'm Dave. They cut right to the Dave card, the theme. And then they cut right to him and Els on the phone phone call. Yeah, his phone call with young Els, and he's saying the breast meat is the best meat. (laughs) (laughs) I was touching them both at the same time, Els. What? Really? And then all of a sudden you hear his mom like, Dave, come Come down now. I've been listening listening the whole time. And you're like, fuck me, dude. Which, by the way, are young kids not going to have that anymore? They'll never know. There's the, no landline. They'll never know the struggle of having a landline, and you, it's only the one in the house. And your parents could easily, at any point, you never know, tune in. Like you're sitting there and you're talking a girl up, and all of a sudden you just hear a little. 
And you go, wait, ma- mom, mom, get out the line. Mom, is that you? <laughs> and you have to open your door. You're like looking downstairs. Or if- oh, I'm trying to talk to Sheila. <laughs> Turn the, go away. Which I'll call you back. And it you remember that? I'll call you back. And it doesn't matter when you call him back. That's it. You lost your shot right there. You're fucked. That's it. Game over. You're fucked. But if you're talking to your bestie, your bestie's like, oh, fuck. You're yeah. fucked. Yeah. Oh, and? I'll talk to you in hell. And I have had those. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you when you're done being grounded. Right. I'll talk yeah, to I've you had next those month. Yeah. I'll see you at school, but I'll talk to you next month. Yep. 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 So then, so then Dave's in his room. They have this awkward talk with him about like sex. Oh, my God. But it's. More awkward than the normal awkward sex talk. Yeah. Because it starts with the mom, the dad being like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> and Dave's mom like, goes, they're, they're having threesomes. They were having like, threesomes. <laughs> so <laughs> they, like, they, they, no, they, that's not what it's this not was. It's not always happening. And he's like, wait, so your penis? Did they touch? Did they, did I, they, I, Dave, did they touch your penis? <laughs> And Dave just screams out. He's no, but he's literally like feeling just like he's shaking. And like he just like has in this awkward moment. You're just like, he's what is going on really while they're kind of like just kind of like trying to figure out what the fuck. Well, like they see, think it's threesome. Also, they think it's this. Because they, they have no idea. They weren't there. What can I say to get out of this? I think what he's thinking is like, honestly, what the truth is like why he didn't want the girls to touch his pee pee. Which was what he, he scream out. I'm a shit. Something about like I'm a. I got a of, fucked up dick. I got a fucked up dick. And then the mom goes, "Is this because of the surgery?" And we find out Dave talking about what he talked about in the first episode to the doctor is all true. Yep, Dave's got the hypos. Dave got the hi- get that got that hype the hype p. Yeah, he's got that hype p. He's got the hype. So he's got a fucked up dick. He's got a hole, an extra hole. And then the dad goes, well, we can fix the extra hole. We talked about having the surgery. He's like, I don't want to wear a diaper. He doesn't want to wear a diaper for a year. And I'm like, which dude? For a year? You have to wear a diaper. At 12? I'm putting this one out there. At 12? Parents, if your son has two dick holes. Fix it early. Before he's normally out of diapers, that should be fixed. Do, yeah, do, do it. Do it in the first yeah three four years. I mean, get get on that. Get 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 on. Don't let your kid. You're gonna be give your kid, kid a, a fucking um, circumcision a dick complex. You're gonna give him a circumcision, but you're not gonna give him a normal facing pee hole. Please help him. Which, by the way, that pee like, dude, no. Imagine peeing just out. Just no. You have to hold a hole just so you can go pee out of your normal hole. Well, I didn't know that you works. go out of both, I guess. I mean, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you could spell your name maybe extra fast in the P. Well, I'll get to and that no. later on. But anyways, <laughs> so we, we get to the point where, like, they're kind of a little bit more sympathetic for, it, like, what he's doing. I love how the dad goes. He, and she's like, your dad has a small penis. Well, yeah, because Dave's also like, well, it's also small. <laughs> and he's like, your dad has a small penis. He's like, it's average. <laughs> it's average for for the United States. For, for America. For America, yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, ladies, let's throw this one out there. Never try and be like, oh, it's okay. My significant other deals with this, too. Whatever the situation. Like, there was an episode of The Office where uh, Andy can't Andy can't get it up. And, uh, and what's her face? Pam's trying to make it better. So she goes, I mean, it happened with us once, too. And Jim's like, uh, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, we had had so much sex earlier that day, and then I worked out, and I was really tired. So I think maybe for like a minute, what I'm saying is, ladies, if you're trying to be like, oh, it's okay, my significant other deals with it too. Don't compare. Don't. Don't Don't ever do do that. It's going to make things bad. And by the way, then you're going to be in an argument later. Right. Yeah. You want to be in an argument? Because that's how you get an argument. Exactly. So just just, just be like, oh, sorry for your small dick. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it happens. It but, happens. And then? And then so... Cuts to present day. Cuts to present day. Cuts to present day, Dave, where he's recording in the studio. Nope. It's before that. Oh. oh. Cuts to present day, Dave, as a youthful adolescent at our age. He's uh, sneaking out of his bedroom. He sneaks out of his bedroom to go look at... To see if his, what his roommate's doing. Sees Mike's just sitting on the couch talking about, I don't care what you think. I think the Star Wars Born is a really great movie. I thought it was a really enjoyable film. And then he runs back to his room and you're like, what is he sneaking off to do? And all of a sudden, he grabs some Go, little... Goes into his closet. He grabs a leg vagina. 
That's the best way I can describe this. So it's literally a half a body. It's the it's like a quarter of a body though. So it's what a, it is is it's the torso down. It's the ass, the vagina, and the legs, but the front half is also like sheared flat. Yes. And it's, it's half a body. It's, it's literally the bottom half of a woman's body. Bottom half of a woman. And it's it's clearly heavy when he picks it up. Right. It's got some and weight it's like to it. it's floppily, like m- jiggling around. The legs ain't and got no is, bones. It is, for lack of a better word, fucked up. It is so creepy. He grabs his fuck doll. His half fuck doll. Yeah. He and places he it on his, bed. on his bed. And by the way, like, you can clearly see the vagina lips on the thing. And I was a little surprised it could get away with showing that much <laughs> on FFX, FXX. Now, what, what, what... What made me fucking giggle as a little... And again, I'm watching this whole episode at work for the very first time. As we describe this, ladies and gentlemen. Blake, HR would like to have a conversation yeah. with you. <laughs> we want to have a word with you over here. Uh, but I have been, I was watching this episode the whole time at fucking work. <laughs> so I literally didn't watch the first episode at work. When I watched the, the first time I watched it, I basically just listened to the whole thing because... As soon as I started seeing scenes, I'm like, this episode's going to be nah, fucked. Nah. This is so fucked up. I'm just going to have to play it in the background and just listen to what happens. So, <laughs> so for, for the paint picture, he lays, <laughs> he lays the half body across his bed, turns on a heater, first of all. Yeah, he picks up a fucking space a heater. A space heater, puts, puts it on his, on desk, his like, table, pointed right at it. Puts it on his night off. table, his nightstand, points but, at the fucking leg. Which also, I got to assume. There's literally, he's the, I have to assume he's the only person in LA with a fucking space heater. (laughs) (laughs) Not only that, he's the only person I know that has toilet paper on a stick. Yeah. He pulls out a stick, not like a broom handle. Not like like a wildlife stick. It's like he went outside to a tree, snapped a branch off, walked in, and then ties toilet paper to the end of it. It seems whenever he needs some self stimulation loving. He fucks his half body. But he r- just takes a little bit of teepee and wraps it around the edge of the, of the stick. stick. And then w- what I love is after that, like, you know, he turns on some porn. He finds some porn that he wants. He puts, puts some it porn on. on. He fucks the half body. No, 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 no. Before he fucks it, though. Okay. He just pulls out a bottle of lube and it's just like drizzling it over haphazardly over the fuck Over doll. His, half, his half body. Yeah. <laughs> just like dripping it here and there. Not like... In the fuck zone at all? Just kind of like... It's kind of like a little bit everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like he's getting ready to give him a massage. But then he does fuck it. He and, fucks it all of 30 seconds. And, and, but by the way, like, he does fuck it. It's not like you see his head and it's like, oh, I want. I bet I know what he's doing. No, no, no. It is his bare ass. He's fucking. He is. It's his crotch against... It's pee-pee on Vajiji. Yeah, I'm pe- and he pe- is G-G. humping. So, like you said, he goes 30 seconds. Here's what I'm wondering. Did he fuck it for 30 seconds or... Was it just for show? Was Well, no. Was it like they're kind of jumping? Jump this part in time and jump the next part in time. I think, I think it, was all a one, it was all a one shot. Rewatch, it's like all a one shot. Well, so he gets done. He takes the stick. No, before even that. Oh, my God. The best part. he gets part. done, my favorite part of this whole part. episode... What the it's, fuck? Is he has a poster of Drake on the other side of his bed, and he immediately finishes, and he looks straight ahead from the other side to the other side of his bed, and who's looking back? It's a fucking poster, yeah. a black and white poster of Drake, and it's like Drake staring at him too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the as he's finishing, he's looking Drake in the eyes, and he's like, he almost has this look of like, it's it's we call this uh post nut clarity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe what I just did. Oh God! You ever I'm, had that? You ever you ever jerk off? Or? Everyone has had. Well, every man has had that. A post nut clarity. Yeah, the worst. And you're like, or even when you fucking you fuck some girl you know you're not supposed to, oh. and you nut, and then you're just like, I need to <sighs> leave, or you need to leave now. Every like, part of this decision was a this bad was not good. decision. I should. Who was I? This. Fifteen seconds ago. I can't believe I did that. I'll Why do am it again I? in a week? But I can't believe I did. I that. might get corona before <laughs> I fuck you again. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, women like that is something that goes through. Like if a guy's doing something, when you're like, I can't believe he could do that. Yeah, we can't either. It's just we can't believe it. 
afterwards. I can't believe it's not Nutter. (laughs) (laughs) In the during, we're not thinking. It's it's the afterwards. We agree with you. We are ashamed of ourselves too. Right. Don't worry. Don't worry. We we, we catch we we catch the uh, we guilt too. We know. Oh, oh we know. <laughs> but so he looks at Drake and he's just like this this post nut clarity, also guilt, and he's just like oh. But then he he shoves the stick, the teepee under the stick, into it. He has a stick with teepee at the end, and he rubs around. Where the nut oh, would be at. Well, it looks like he also goes inside yeah, he tries the to, orifice. Right. He tries to like... Stick. He's cleaning that part out. And I love when he pulls it out and half the toilet paper rips. It is just... it's So basically... It is so nasty, dude. It is. He's, it's, he's it's, cleaning. It's as nasty as we're describing. It is worse. And then there's just... Pieces there's of just toilet paper pieces of the shit orifice. tickets sticking out of this out of fake badge. Which, by the way, I have to assume... Using the stick made it harder to clean up, right? I have no idea why he used the stick. With why wouldn't you just fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, and then just wipe, just wipe like a normal person? Wipe when you're done. Yeah. But nope, he doesn't it's do like that. It's like this long-ass, like, fake-ass tampon And then, thing. by the way, like, he just tosses it back in the closet. closet. Like, he doesn't wash it out or anything. No. He also doesn't clean himself off. No. So that means he's just, he gets up, he's puts on his clothes. man juice. That means he's just walking out with, with man milk lube and sp- all over lube and spunk. All over him. Just. He yeah. close and he, wa- hey, I'm headed out to the studio. <laughs> and this is my favorite part of this whole opening. He goes, yeah, he's like, yeah, hey, I'm headed out to the studio. And Mike goes, okay, love you. <laughs> but no, he goes, have a great session. Love you. <laughs> I told Jeff, if we were roommates, that's exactly what it's we would do. It's 100% how we would act. I would fuck a half. A half human, and then walk out, and, and then I, and then I would tell Blake I love him without knowing why I should be ashamed of him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the studio session, which actually is going pretty good. It's a, it's, it's a pretty decent. They play it at the end of the the, the thing. Yes, they do the in the in cool. the end credits. So yeah. watch the end credits for once. Yeah, watch the end credits. Kind of hear the full song. It's yeah. it's it's, 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 a, it's not a song he released. It's just a song. No, no, for the it's show. Just, and it's just a typical fucking song. They should release a soundtrack for the fucking show by this. I'll bet they probably. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. They might have one by the end of this, huh? Oh man, do you think John 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 John's gone? It's gonna be on there. <laughs> if John's gone, I'll buy the fucking album. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't it? But. When they cut to the studio and Dickie's in the in there singing, it also points out. It, I noticed, um, excuse me, his uh, perfectionism in there too, because literally the tracks playing, it sounds like it's basically done. All he's doing is dropping in what we call in the in, <gasps> in the industry is a is an ad lib. He's literally just trying to get a <gasps> an ad lib. Is, is just, it's just a sound effect that you can do like on. So you've already recorded the. Um, You've already recorded the, the tracks and you've already done the dubs where you double up on the where you're rapping. What we do now is the ad libs and the ad libs are either the sound effects or like where if somebody says like, yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like you do it in the right. background, which makes sense. He's doing the ad lib portion for those in the industry that know what's going on. But and th- he's literally just doing the one part where he's gasping. He's just trying to get the gasp in there. And he no joke does it like five, four or five times. Yeah. And it's just that part. So girlfriend comes, yeah, he's just literally trying to perfect that part. Girlfriend comes in, brings him a sandwich. Allie comes in. Brings him a sandwich. Which, by the way, we have a correction. Oh, her name, so we, we thought her name was Tyler Masiak. Taylor? Taylor Masiak, yeah, T-A-Y. Right. Taylor Masiak. Ty-ty. It's Taylor Masiak. Thank you, Dave, for- Shout out to Dave. For, for educating us. Educating? Educating. Thank you. As you cannot take. We, we can't all ride the big Hyper bus. Spazdias. Some of us ride the little bus. <laughs> uh, Taylor Mishiak. But so she walks in and she walks uh, and you, it's a camera, like you're, you're Dave looking out, seeing her uh, walk in and talking to Els, you know? And uh, she brings up a sandwich and she's all super cute. Or not Mishiak, Mishiak, whatever. It's got it. It's got it. It's not what we said it was. So it is Mishiak then. It's, it's it's whatever we didn't pronounce it as. But any, so anyway, so she's there, <laughs> and Els invites her to. She's like, "All right, I'm gonna get going." And Els like, "No, no, no, what are you doing? Stay here. He's he's on fire, man. Stay here. Listen to the song, you know." Oh, what's so funny? I think at this point is when he talks, and she's like, "Ooh, you sound hot. You sound hot in there." And, and he's like, and, "Oh yeah, thanks, babe." And I love how Els is like, "It's literally just a whole bunch of filters. None of it's him. None of it's him." <laughs> I literally have like Els seven. shoots him the 
fuck down. Seven filters, <laughs> amplifier. Like none of this is really him. <laughs> I love it, dude. He is. He's the Els, fucking Every time Bicky gets a big, uh, attempts to get a big head, Els is like, Els is there to keep his ego in check. Keeps in check. Yeah. So she hears him saying that he loves to eat ass. He said it's a song about like, oh, I'm gonna eat uh, I'm fucking I'm gonna, and I'm gonna eat your ass. I think. And she's gonna gasp, and that's what, that's the take yeah, he was trying to get. Where he was like, <gasps> yeah. And you know, she's listening to it, and she's into it. She's liking it. But you can also tell Dave isn't so happy with her being there. Right. He feels a little nervous. So cut to next scene. They they get and they fuck. They about to get they fuck. Which on. hang on before we go there, I was wondering something when we were watching it just now. Do you think Dave is paying for studio time at all, or do you think Els is just doing him a real favor? Els is doing him a solid. That's point. what I think too. I, I think it's Els is doing, and that's why I think that's why Els is a little uh, not annoyed. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, he's so kind of like blase, not blase. Fuck you, but so critical. Yeah. Yeah, because he does like he's just like I don't even need to be here right yeah, now. Yeah, no, like, I'll agree with you. I think like he's he's definitely a a lot of a lot of his annoyance towards Dicky comes from the fact that like, dude, I'm doing you a real. I'm, solid. I'm doing you a solid right yeah. now. Like, I, you owe me. Like, I guess I'm here. Fuck it, whatever. Yeah, it's like a fuck it, whatever. Like, I'm gonna help you and I'm gonna do the most I can, but also like. Don't get out of line either. Yeah. Like you, you've got this. Remember much, how much you owe, you owe me. Right you now. got this much thread to work with, and exactly. it ain't a lot. No. So to cut to next scene. Tell them she. I, I love how like she like throws everything off the table. Yeah, she walks in and she. It's does like that, supposed that to be like hot sweep everything hot off. Hot sex the, and you know and then, that passion, you know. And then Dave was like, "Well, wait, minute, minute. Let me just like there was a lot of there was a lot. She was I like, had things in a certain order there. Let me just, like if you just like, I'll, uh, yeah, no." And she literally looks at him and just goes, I'll be waiting at the bed. Yeah. And she smiles and everything about it. And she wants She's you know, all goes about Dave. Yeah. She's all about Dave. You I think this shows how like good their relationship is. I think it shows how into him she is. Oh, yeah. Very that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not to say like Dave is a bad boyfriend, but what she is is tolerable and patient with him. Like, she's cool with his neur- uh, neuroticism. She doesn't care. She's like, oh, okay. Like, okay. So they get to, they get to the fucking, but Dave is doing all these weird things he's setting the light a certain way he's coming out a certain way he's, he he has like a sip of water and just clearly drools it on her fucking he spills stomach. it on her she's like what the fuck <laughs> and she says she doesn't care she wants her boyfriend's dick mm-hmm. yep she uh she kettles the pee pee right then and yeah there. and they're going yeah so they get to fucking and once again like full body they're naked you just see butts but like dude they're they clapping cheeks bro yeah they yeah. what the kids call clapping cheeks. This isn't one of those weird like let's toss a sheet over us. While like softcore, so, softcore showtime. Points. It's not like Friends where like it's oh let's just roll over under the sheet and we were and we're gonna we're gonna pretend we just had some good old fashioned it was, SPX. It was it was so good. Was man. it good for you? Is it good for me? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that was but no, no, these two, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're fucking. They fucking. They fucking. They clap in cheeks, bro. Yep, That's what the kids yep. call it. And what happens is, when, it, right before he finishes, she's like, eat my ass. No, 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 no. No, that wasn't it? No. She goes, no, 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 I'm so close. Oh, that wasn't the eat my ass part. Oh. No. Which also, every sing- like, that's one of those, that's like the classic thing where he's about to finish she's like no no no, i'm so close it's like well if he tells you he's about to finish he means like three strokes ago he's about to finish he is done (laughs) he finished he's waited as long as he could (laughs) but so then then she's like no no no, hang on hang on on. i'm I'm so close so she flips over right 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 and then she spills the eat my ass as he's about to finish (laughs) and he just blows through it doesn't pay attention keeps going and Dave, 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 as they lay down, makes the creepiest uh, <laughs> finishing noise. This ain't no Hadouken. This is just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so <laughs> creepy. <laughs> but then, then they roll over. And, and, and he asks her, he's like, he goes, did you, did you say something? And she's like, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I asked you to eat my ass. And he was like, what? Like, he's he goes, so confused. He says, I would never in a million years do that. Right. So they get into this big like quarrel about how he's not going to eat ass. He would never eat her ass, even if she was Jessica Alba. And she's like, 
I mean, I would eat your ass if you asked me to. <laughs> this part's great. Hey, I heard you on a song, like talking about like eating your ass. Like, I thought maybe that'd be something you'd like. And, right. You know, I, I would like it. You know, maybe something new we could try. Uh, I would eat your ass if you wanted me to. So th- this is really where we talk about the dissemination of the character. Where like, remember we talked about in the first episode where like he was like, you know, I'm talking about 69 girl when she's on her period. Oh yeah, like exactly. The things that he talks about on the songs are not necessarily the things well, he even that says, are Dave. He even says, you know, I mean, rap is such a sexually charged genre. It's not like me talking. It's just you know, it's it's rapping. It's different. But my favorite about this scene, <laughs> the funniest part I should say about this scene is when she goes, I mean, I I do your ass if you wanted me to. He just goes, I would never ever. Sub- subject you to that my <laughs> asshole is like the worst place on earth there's always pieces and cake down there cake down there she's like cake what and he goes and you don't want to know what that means <laughs> she goes yeah she goes cake what does that mean he's like you don't want to know what that means <laughs> <laughs> another one of those throwaway jokes was if you're not paying attention you're still laughing from the last you're laughing from joke. two jokes ago which by the way on it's n- if if you're going to broach the salad tossing subject with a significant other for the first time, I got to think that it's not in the middle of the event. It's you you got to flush it out beforehand when it's like, okay, did you take a good shower today? <laughs> Is that good and clean? Maybe you should go take a shower now. I want to like so, suds it. Rinse it, suds it again. Let's make really Rinse sure. Rinse it one more time. That that area is not meant for cleanliness, so let's just make sure it's clean before have we even think of proceeding. You know what? I am going to plead the fifth here, and we're going to move on you with our story. Don't worry, <laughs> don't, I, worry don't, don't, don't worry about what I've done. Don't be worried about the fuck I be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I might have eaten a booty before. I might have been. I might have partaken in these I activities. might have been a horrible slut in college. You don't need to know about that. I might have been under the influence, too. Under the influence of booty. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, but, whatever. Yeah, anyway, anyway, so moving. On. So <laughs> they have that, and so they have that argument. But yeah, it is absolutely like him trying to be like, no, 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 no that's not the same person as me, and da, 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 and like that's just no, that's just not something I would ever do. So here's the thing: me, you, we eat the booty like groceries. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Dave does not. <laughs> and so they and so they like, moving on. Talk, and they lie down. And then they and then I noticed actually a really good piece of cinematography. Something that I at least I like. You know, so then they both lay down. And Dave's lying there and the camera's like above him, looking down on him, just right on his face, and it just immediately cuts to the exact same face, but he's standing in line at a restaurant the next day. Oh, right. And I always like those cuts. I think they're really good cuts. I think they're really clean. I think they look really good. It says it says everything without saying a lot. Exactly. Like, without them using words. Like, the first time I ever really noticed it was Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah. When, you know, like, he's drunk and he writes on the board, like, go get Liz back, go around moms, whatever else, get life in order. And then he sits down, leans his head back, and, like, he's clearly passes out. Or whatever. And then, boom, it's, it's day. Right. And I was like, that's fucking, that was awesome. Right. So yeah, but like they did that here, and I really like it. And uh, when and the next day, Dave with that face, he's standing in line, waiting to uh, get a table with Gata, Els, and Mike. This is an hilarious scene. First of all, this is so fucking funny. I, the bits that I got out of this though were really funny because like clearly Els and Mike know him the best. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, Gata is still trying to like kind of catch up on like the friendship. Well, the funny thing is, it's it's more like the friendship's trying to catch up to Gata being there because Gata doesn't care for Gata. He's part of the friendship. Done. Right. You know. But he's clearly like, <laughs> I don't say he's there for different reasons, but it's just like his friendship is clearly it's still fresh because like. All these guys are like, oh, we all know this secret about Dave. Well, so and that's the thing, you know, so they sit down uh, to have lunch and they're getting ready and everything. And like the hostess even says like, oh, you know, we're clearing a table for you, but, you know, we'll seat you right now. So they sit down and Gata takes one of those black cloth napkins and he t- just which takes is, off his, uh, grill. his grill, puts it in there, wraps it up. And they're all talking. And uh, and Dickie is like saying to Elle's like, hey, by the way, thanks for ruining my life. And they're like, what are you talking about? And he goes. <laughs> Well, you let Allie listen to that, and then she asked me to eat her asshole. <laughs> and they're all like, so? So what? Yeah. <laughs> and Gay's like, 
Yo, you eat booty? You eating the booty, bro? (laughs) (laughs) He's like, no, I am not. Thank you. (laughs) It's so weird to him. It's so foreign to him. Like he feels it it really feels like this is the point where I feel like compared to his friends, he's almost sexually repressed. Oh, absolutely. And because of his insecurities. And and that's what this entire conversation is clearly about. This entire episode's about this. This entire episode is about sexual insecurity. Oh, yeah. Where his friends are like. Bro, like it's okay to do this, and he's like, no, no, like no. Yeah, like, he's he's literally asking him, like, so what am I supposed to do with my girlfriend? And they're like, I don't know, you know, like talk dirty to her, <laughs> watch <laughs> no. porno with her. Well, so Els goes, can I go first? They go, yeah, and Els goes, spin her mouth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you must Which, no. spit in her mouth. I have not done that, and I'm okay with saying I have not. I've not, that. but I've had some guys that have done it. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly another conversation for a different day. Oh, my God. But, yeah, so, like, and Elle's, like, spitting her mouth. And Dave's like, what? Just, like, open her mouth and spit into it? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and, <I'm> like, <laughs> and then uh, and then Mike's like, yeah, just watch it. Like, dude, just, like, talk dirty to her. And Dave's like, what? I'm just supposed to, like, talk dirty? What am I? Supposed to... Is that just, like, like, that's something that people just do? And Mike's like, yes. That is what everyone does. <laughs> everyone, he's like, everyone just talks dirty to each other during sex. He feels I, I, sexually repressed. Like, he's like trying to like catch up. Absolutely. So like, and then like, he's like, and then he goes to Kata. He's like, well, like, what would you say to her? And, and get, well, Kata goes like, yeah, man, you just lean in like Mike Tyson, nibble on that ear a little bit and just, no. it just like whisper something in her ear, you know? <laughs> and here's the part that I actually thought was really interesting. Cause then Dave's like, well, what, what would you say to Gata? And Gata says some like really he romances motherfucker. Oh, when he talks to the waitress, he's like, "Girl, you're an inspiration. Yeah, you everything I thought no, nobody could be." And that, that, that. You, you, I thought you was greatness, and then I, and then I thought I knew what greatness was, and I didn't know what greatness was, and I didn't know what great great was, and and uh, hey, can I get your number? Can I, uh, what, he what's asked number? The, the lovely part is he ends it with like, "So let me get you, so can I get your number?" Because like the waitress is walking around the table while he's saying this, and then he turns it into talking to her about it. And then he goes, so can I get your number? And she's like, I don't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> and then at this part, it's very clear Gate has lost it. Wait, no, no, sorry. Because then Mike goes, dude, just like, I don't know, just like watch porn with her. Right. And David, and it, D- Dave's like, what? And Mike's like, everyone does this. It's not unnormal. And D- so again, the little dicky, like being repressed is like, I don't know what kind of porn to watch. Like, what would I do? I'm just going right. to watch it with her. And at this point, you know, Gator's Oh, like, we missed something. What's that? So let's finish this part and then I'll go back to it. Well, Gator misses his grill. Like, he gets, he well, loses his grill. Yeah, yeah. So we missed after Dave and Allie were done having sex. It was like, and he was like, oh, I would never eat your ass. And da, da, da. She's like, well, like, what kind of porn do you like? Oh. What kind of porn do you watch? And he, he's like, I don't know, just like HD. And she's like, okay, no, but seriously. He goes, no, seriously. Sometimes you get in at 720 and then your hands are already cramping up. And, and she goes, okay, like what's the weirdest thing you've ever jerked off to? And he just goes like, milking, milking. porn. <laughs> For those who don't know milking, <laughs> pause they this explain. episode. <laughs> go look up milking porn on your favorite porn site. I'm, hey, are you going to Google? Are you going to judge somebody if they go do it right now? No. Do they want some to look up? I can. I mean, <laughs> um, I've been told you. Can oh, what find. I've been told is the site X videos <laughs> or you porn, whatever you're into. Well, not even Google it. Like, I'm just going to talk a little bit. You're probably listening to this on your phone. <laughs> I hope you're not. I hope you're listening to it at a computer at full volume in the middle of your workplace. And everybody hears that you love milking porn. That you love milking porn. So if you watch milking porn, you exactly know what we're talking about. Guys laying down on a table. With a hole cut out. Where the knot at his face. Where the pubiscus was going to be. <laughs> where the pubiscus. That's right. Where you look, Where your pee-pee sticks out. Then the girl just kind of gets underneath. and girl just... gets underneath the table and milks your pee-pee. Until and the man... she milks the phallus. So the man milk comes out. Yep. Basically, just... Draining your pee pee. Girl, it, it's like. It's a hand job. It's a glory hole, but the guy's lying down. It's literally a hand. You just get yeah, a hand job. Absolutely. And you're just facing downwards. Which, by the way, if you're like, God, why do these two know so much about this? No, no, they go over it in the episode. They talk about it in the episode. I've yeah. never seen milking porn. Never ever go to X videos and watch milking porn or anything like I that. I mean, can we be honest? Who who loads up a porn is like, I just want to watch a hand job? Nah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it before. Okay. 
Sometimes I'm in the mood. Uh, so anyway, so now, so now Gaiden knows that everybody's his finding is, out uh, so much about me. So now Gaiden knows his grill's missing. <laughs> Gaiden knows his grill's missing. And he's freaking out. Mike goes and finds it. Apparently the best boys took it while they were cleaning the table. Which is absolutely reasonable. Makes absolute sense. I mean, Gaeta folded it up in the black cloth. But Gaeta's also like, well, you guys weren't paying attention? And Hells is like, <laughs> no, I wasn't paying attention to your grill. I was paying attention to the fucking conversation. And, uh, and uh, yeah, Mike sits back down. He's just like, here you go. Busboy had it. Right. Super nice, super helpful. You know, whatever. And then they're talking about, uh, and then they're talking about, like, Oh yeah, so then they're talking about getting. It's like you don't get it. I'm I'm from the trenches. You you get. We're not the same. You don't understand what it's like. I'm from I'm the West Side of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, no, I'm not like these two. I'm from the West Side of Chicago. And then so Ellis, you're goes, from Chicago. What's the West Side like? Eh, it's not bad. Okay. It's the South Side that's bad. Right, that's what I've heard. The that, West Side's fine. That's Chirac, right? Also, remember the West. The West Side's like the suburbs, dude. I don't know. I've never been to Chicago. The, well, the east side's a lake, so <laughs> there's the north side, <laughs> and like yeah, the west side of Chicago's fine. It's it's really the, it's the um, the west side is where uh, you'll get like the the kind of like poorer suburbs, but it's still a suburb of Chicago, so it's not like poor poor. It's not like Detroit suburbs poor. It's I never been to Detroit either, but I know it's broke. So it's like. Kyle or Buda from here. Oh. Yeah. It's fine. Yelling shit. Like you might get, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. Yelling it's, shit. No. But then Els is like, no, I'm not like these guys either. You know, you and me, he goes together. You and me, we get each other. You know, we get an a, a word and uh, throws an N word or two in there. But like conversationally, we're each other's N words. He's like, we get it. We get it. And uh, I love how they call it Els. And then Els is, and they're like, ha. And Els is like, I, I like, goes, you, everyone thinks I'm rich a rich, boy, bla- like, nah. rich black kid. I'm not a rich black kid. I mean, my parents have my money. parents got money, but <laughs> and I they all, got no money. <laughs> and they all just start laughing their asses off at him. That's great. All but, right. So at some point during this conversation, I'm gonna get a beer. Keep talking. You so want another beer, point, right? Um, I'm okay for now, bud. Okay. But thanks. But so at some point during this conversation, they're having lunch and all this, and Gator loses a grill and blah blah blah. blah. Gata's like, so dude, why are you so like weird about like, why is this, why is all this so weird for you, man? Why is it so weird for, you know, your girl to see, to watch porn with you and this that, and the other. And Dickie turns to Els and Mike and goes, and you guys really understand because of, you know, and then, and then Els, oh, Gata has no idea. Els is looking from Dickie's face to his crotch, from his face to his crotch. He goes, oh, you mean that? <laughs> and Dickie's like, yeah. He looks at Mike and he goes, Duh. And Gator goes, uh, ain't no secrets at this table. Right. I love that. This is the beginning of the conversation. So when Dickie <laughs> yeah. tries to explain about his dick, he was like, I, I had. And we, he goes, I was, bo- I have a birth deformity on my penis. And like, hey, oh my God, I shit, man. He's eat- like, no, no, don't you hear that shit. Moving on. Yeah, we're about to eat some lunch, man. I want to hear about all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like he just asked to be part of like. And then he's out. The end. And they tried to explain. And he's like, ah. Oh, no, no, I don't hear about the shit. Yeah. But so, uh, so then it, uh, so then near the end of lunch, Gate is talking, and now after uh, Mike's helped him out, Gate is like, "Hey, I can help you with your streaming issue." So apparently, Mike, yeah, during the shit was having an issue. He's having some issues fish. streaming fish. Not, not. Wait, 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 wait. For those that don't know, not don't look up F I S H. We're talking about the group. The, the what is what is the, what is the what is the kind of music they play? It's um, they suck. The, the kind of music they play, though, is... Uh, it would be described as, like, jam band. Yeah. But yeah. it's not, like, Grateful Dead. It's P-H-I-S-H. worse. P-H-I-S-H. That's fish. Go look them up. P-H-I-S-H-I-T. <laughs> they suck. Fish it. <laughs> fish blow. So, anyway. that's what Mike's trying to jam. So, yeah, that's what he's trying to listen to and stuff. Um, and Gator, Gator... And Gator's like, yeah, man, I'll help you out. So then we go to commercial, and then we come back, and it's Ellie talking to Emma. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Allie talking to Emma at their place about all the fucking like just, just about girl like talk. it's also it's weird. Girl talk. And she's like, yeah. So you know, like he's talking about like you know eating ass and stuff in the song, and I don't know. It was just I've never heard Dave talk that way, and it was just it was really manly, it turned her on. So like, the descriptor is it turned her on, and I love how and I was like, oh yeah, I my was ex. Like, Ex-boyfriend used to eat my ass all the time. I loved it. Yeah, he, he just she, lived down there. <laughs> he, he loved eating my ass more than he loved fucking me. Yeah, he just lived in there. 
I was like, I love getting my ass eaten. And Allie's like, oh, so, so you get the idea so that awesome. like Allie's sex with Dickie is not as like it's it's not as fulfilling for her as like she makes it out to be. Well, because then and you know Emma asks her question. She's like, wait, so like, what do you guys even do? And Allie's like, no, I mean, it's you I know, try to make good. myself calm. And she's like, make she goes, yourself. Well, no, no, she calm. goes. I mean, I can make myself calm almost every time. And like, I could like barely even do that with Rob. And I was like, I fucking hate Rob. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Make yourself calm. Right. Make yourself calm. Like, what do you do? And she's like, well, if I close my eyes and I just. She's like, to escape reality? <laughs> if I just imagine I'm Dave, Dickie, like Dave I imagine someone, Dave, like, but like as a better Dave. Like not. <laughs> And she's like, why in the... She's like, you're a kindergarten teacher, bro. Like, You were made for this. Teach him. Yeah, teach him. <laughs> you know? So the next time they fucking... Well, so here's my question. Does it... I don't remember. Does it go f- then from... It goes from yes, that to... You're right. It goes... No, no, no. It goes from that to... And it goes to the grocery store. To... to what? It goes to uh, Gata and Mike, right? Right. At, at, at the, oh, my God. At the house. Such an awesome scene. And he's helping Dave... Oh, he's helping Mike set up the the fee. No, no, no. It's before that. They're at the store, remember? No. They're walking down the store and they're talking about like Dave, Mike's dad when he was younger would just get drunk and drive their family cars into trees and shit. And all of a sudden you just hear, hey, you broke ass motherfucker. And oh, this guy right. fucking pushes Gator. <laughs> I mean, he gives him a good So Mike and Gator, yeah, at the, at the corner store. And then like all of a sudden, like, and I don't think this is really important. It just sets up the next scene. I mean, it sets it up, but like, it's it's not really important. Like, Gator gets into like some, somebody like has an altercation. Some with guy them. just comes up. There's and something. There's each something other about and Gator that this each person other. knows, and he literally comes up and like tries to start a fight with Gator. And Gator's like cool throughout the whole bit. But just, the like, thing for me is, Mike is clearly freaked out. Mike He's is shook. backing away. Mike is shook. It. He's wide eyed. Shook it. Yeah. But then, then Gator, then the guy, uh, the store owner goes, "Hey, I'm calling the cops." And Gator's just like, well, "Why?" Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? And, you know, the guy leaves and he grabs, like, a cigar or, like, a Slim Jim or something on the way out. And he goes, stop putting on this guy's tab. And he's, he's like, like oh, yeah, cause that's you right. Because he broke. <laughs> but then he turns back to Mike and he goes, oh, shit. Orange vanilla Coke? Where do you think they import this shit from? <laughs> shit, man, this looks just like your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And, my, and Gabe is fine. Yeah. And, and so, cut to... Then they're at the house. They're at the house, and he's helping Mike set it up, set up the fish stream from uh, maybe it's a phone or like something. It was something to do with like Apple or something. Yeah, like Gate is just working the inputs and shit and getting yeah. it going. But um, the scene, but so Mike goes, "Hey man, what was up with you and that guy at the store?" Before that, the Stella part. Yeah. Okay. So Mike and pulls we we Stella Artois out of the refrigerator. Uh, he goes, "Hey man, we only got Stella. Is that cool?" And he's like, "Is it rosé?" It's beer. Yeah, and he's like, well, okay, I, I just thought you liked the finer things in life. <laughs> Which, Gage is going, oh, I was just expecting the finer things. Like, it's nothing. I was laughing right. so hard. So my thing was, he was expecting Stella wine. They Stella makes a rosé, because he asked, is there, because it's, we only got Stella. He's like, the rosé? And he's like, no. He's, no, he said, oh, is it a rosé? Right. So I was thinking that he just didn't, he just doesn't know what Stella Artois the beer is. Yeah, of course not. He does. I didn't know that he thought. I didn't think that he thought it was uh, specifically Stella wine. I think he was just like heard the name Stella. I was like, oh, that's clearly a wine. Well, Stella has a type of rosé, so, as I showed you. You, you did. I have no. I, I, I'm with you. I'm actually with knows? you that I don't think he, he even he, knew fucking that no, Stella. I think Artois. he was just like, yeah. <laughs> I think he, had he had no, no idea. He's like, what it was. So when he's he like, asked right, out a rosé, he's like. It's just beer, bro. And he's like, I was just expecting the finer things. I was just expecting the finer things, man. <laughs> and dude, he just throws it. It's so fucking Because, funny. to be quite honest, if you buy, if you buy Stella Rosé, it's between nine ninety nine and eleven ninety nine. Yeah, that if you buy fucking a, thing was saying it's a ten dollar bottle. That's a, it's a six dollar, <laughs> yeah, six dollar, a six bottle of Stella Trois, ten ninety nine. Yeah, nine 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 ninety nine to eleven ninety nine, depending on the gas station. Stella Trois actually is one of my favorite beers. It is a tasty fucking beer, oh, I love especially it. if you have a chilled uh, glass with it. Ooh, stuff's good. Stuff's good. But so then, uh, so then Mike's like, so what was going on with that guy at the store or whatever? And Gay is like, oh, what that that, that was nothing. Right. What are you even talking about, man? It's so Mike is like, uh, oh, uh, well, I was shook. I right. was, I was shook. Free- I was freaking. I was yeah. shook. And then Mike is like, <laughs> and then Mike just goes, hey, man, you, sp- you smoke pot? <laughs> Gator's just like, come on, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love how he grabs a pot and he does a little Dracula. He's like, oh, this is the vampire pot. Oh. <laughs> it's Seriously, like, make you want to bite somebody. So <laughs> fucking white. It was awesome. But it was <laughs> fucking hilarious. But then when G- and Gator smells, he goes, mm, yeah, man, that's that good white people shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then. And then he gets it going and it's like, yo, is this, this it, man? And Mike's like, oh, shit, that's fish. We got fish. Right. I love how he's, he's like, man, how you, I can't believe you You know how to do all this stuff. He's, I used to work for Geek Squad. Yeah, just like, <laughs> yeah, shit, man, I used to work for Geek Squad. Just like really rounding Gata out as a character. What I really love is he goes, so when they going to, when they going to stop. That's the best part. When they going to stop warming up? And he's like, no, oh, no, 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 this is the show, <laughs> which is such a good description of fish. A fish. Uh, when are they going to stop warming up? Oh, God. It's not even like the typical, like, like that you get with like a jam band with fish. Like, at least with the song they had on, it was literally just like, boom, 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 boom. Just cut all this. Uh, fish. It yeah. was so <laughs> fucking boring, bro. But then it cuts, boom, right to Dickie fucking the Saxon. Dickie fucking. Dicky Dickie is deep in that. Dicky's dicking. Dicky's balls deep. Balls deep into his woman. Right. And he's he's making macaroni. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Making macaroni. You ever heard that noise? That. Oh yeah. He making macaroni. But I always uh, thought of mayonnaise, but that's because of an episode of South Park. I gotta show you a video after this. Making macaroni. All right, but I gotta show you South Park. That's yeah, fine. All right, that's fine. <laughs> And, um, he making macaroni, bro. He's splishing around. But like, it's like it's it's they're going. It's, it looks like the last time again. It's not much. And then, and then he just whispers, "Please." She's like, "What?" Then, Please. Ooh, one thing we forgot about their first sexual experience. That's it. When Dicky finished, he made eye contact with Dre again. Oh yeah, with Drake. Drake. Again. Staring Drake in the eyes again. Drake was looking at him. So now we're at the awkward Post sexual. Clarity. We're at the awkward sexual experience, and he's like, P- "Please." She goes, "Why?" He goes, "I said please." <laughs> She's like, "Tell me you want specifically." <laughs> and like, and and they try doing some dirty talk, and it is the funniest, most awkward dirty, dirty talk. talk I've ever heard in my life. It is so goddamn funny. He's like. I want the whole kit. She's like, "I'll oh, tell me what you want." He's like, "I want the, the whole, whole kit and caboodle, the whole kit, the whole kit and caboodle." <laughs> She's like, "Oh, where do you want to finish?" She's like, "On you, in you, like, uh, just anywhere." Oh no, she. Goes, what do you like? And he goes, "Your feminine energy." <laughs> <laughs> but as awkward as it is, oh, it does it for Allie. Oh, right. She gets off. She loves it. She's all into it. She's about it, about it. About that light, though. And then Dickie looks at Drake. Dickie finishes and like, you know, it's Drake again. And it was really shameful. <laughs> not <laughs> not post-nut clarity shameful. Shameful, shameful. And he's just like, oh, no. It's like, Drake. Who we, have I become? Who Drake, have I be- Drake, we had a good thing. Who have I become? <laughs> where did you, where did you go? My lonely. <laughs> or in the words of Drake, who would have thought I'll be caught in this life? Um, <laughs> but so they, so Allie loved it. They go to sleep, and well, Allie goes to sleep. Well, they. Well, I'm gonna say quote quote they. They lie back. The 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 scene cuts to kind of they're going to sleep, or you think they're both asleep. And Dickie's just Dickie's wide eyes staring at the ceiling. He's not happy. Our man sneaks off to the bathroom. With what? With he sneaks off to the bathroom with his little fuck doll. <sighs> his half a fuck doll. His half a fook doll. His half a his half a nut buddy. Oh, his creepy, creepy half a little robot body. Which, by the way, like I know this is a weird thing to notice. You're but- gonna say it though. You know what I noticed about the creepy ass fuck doll? What's that? Its feet were dirty. Moving on. 
Yeah, foot fetish. Fuck you. No, that, you and Quentin Quint no. Tarantino can hang out together. I don't spin in mouse and I don't foot fetish. I can happily say those. I don't watch it. I don't watch it porn. But but uh, so Dickie's in the bathroom. He, he's in the bathroom and he's fucking the half a fuck fuck. He's doggy style fucking this fuck doll on oh. the sink. Next time he goes to your friends, your friends' houses, don't touch anything. <laughs> Just think they could be. Fucking a half a fuck doll on the sink. You could get that's. Hey, you want to get Corona? Because that's how you get Corona. I just want to let you. <laughs> I just want to let you know you might get Corona from fucking, but probably not. But I love how he's fu- he's half he's like all balls deep now in the sex doll, and what the fuck happens? And all of a sudden, Dave, Dave, I've got to pee. He's like, oh shit. Uh, occupied. Right. But babe, I've really got to pee. Well, I'm pooping in here. I can see your feet moving. I can hear you walking. Yeah. And Dave is freaking out. He's literally holding this thing. Sorry. He's holding this thing by the feet with it just over his shoulders. The booty just hanging off his back like it's a fucking <laughs> knapsack. Like a fireman's carry. He's fireman's carry. This fucking half of. And he's literally human. just like spinning in circles looking for a place to fucking hide this thing. And she's just like, please, please, I really got to go. And he goes, well, Mike's not home. Just go in the sink. <laughs> she's like, I'm not going to the fucking sink. Let me in. So he opens he up the finally bathroom. finally hides it in the shower. In the shower. But it's not just like a, a slide shower. It's not just like a It's not a full a cur- tub. A curtain shower. It's one of these, like, the house has been there for a bit. Yeah. And so you have, like, I'm sure some of these people have seen, like, it's basically a stand-up shower. Like mm-hmm. you got to stand up, and it has one of those doors that has like kind of the uh, frosted glass, the frosted glass on it. And like if you're in there, you can't see what's inside or anything like that. So he yeah. throws. So he just tosses it in there. He throws his half a little human fuck toy. And fuck he toy. Opens the door, and Ellie runs in and just boom goes starts re-wees. peeing. My question that I thought she was going to ask, to be quite honest with you, was like, why doesn't it stink? Because he said he had to go poop. He said he has to poops us. He had to poop. Had like, to poops us. But it didn't. But I'm surprised she wasn't like. I mean, why doesn't it smell? Always stink. I've never not pooped and it not smell. Whether it's a little bit or not. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Well. Anyway, whether it's a little bit or not, I know somebody at least farted or or. Pooped. Well, you know what? She also just had some really good sex, and uh, she was really into the pee. So maybe that's why. Maybe. But uh, so he, she just starts going. Oh, I love how he grabs this. Was, I love how he grabs the stick. He's like, yeah, he's I don't like, know how this got here. Must have, this must have gotten dragged in here. Because <laughs> <laughs> he still has this stick with a toilet paper on it. But they're also like, I mean, he's standing in the doorway having a conversation with her while she's peeing. And I have never, ever had a relationship where I've been like, yeah, I want bathroom time to be shared time. I've, I've, I, I have. I haven't. I have. And hey, but, to each their own. I, I mean, my, my ex most of the time, like... She, she wouldn't well, like sometimes if we had a like a conversation going right like she would just go to the bathroom that was inside of her room and like would pee and like talk to me and i'm like oh yeah, yeah we would just continue the conversation like but like while you were in the bathroom with her or while you were in the room i mean like she left the door open between the two but you weren't in there with her right i mean because the, the bathroom was too little like it was way littler uh, than this one i will also but say like i'd be i'd be semi-close like i'd be like maybe five feet away from her mm, like the closet but it was I, I, I don't know how to describe this to you, but like I was literally maybe three to five feet away from her sometimes. I'd be like looking at her and like we'd. I will we'd also say, I think it's different if the girl's peeing than if the guy's peeing. Yes, obviously. I mean, yeah. So anyway, so they're talking and all of a sudden. What happens is the. The. The shower door. The shower door opens and the fucked all legs just roll out. Which is when I noticed they had dirty feet. You're fucked, dude. It was the only thing in the screen. You're so fucked. Shut dude. up. <laughs> I think we both agree Dave is so fucked. But so. Dave is fucked feet up. Feet plop out of the fucking thing, and you can and see she's it. like, what in the fuck is that? And do you remember what Dave says? It's like, uh, uh, it was. It's the screw me silly three. Three. Screw me <laughs> silly three. She's like, what? What the fuck? She's like, how, how? Why is it like that? Do you fuck that thing? Like, and they get. He's like, well, then, I love how he goes. Well, you've asked me like three questions. <laughs> yeah, she goes. Why is it so heavy? What the fuck is that thing? Do you fuck that? 
Like, well, well he, you asked me like three questions. So, and he, oh, by the way, he goes, "Why is it so heavy? I don't know. I'm guessing just the weight of humanity." <laughs> <laughs> and then he, 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 he fuck, he's like, "And he admits, yeah, I fuck yeah. him." And by the way, and she says a couple of things here. She goes, "One." I asked you what the most fucked up thing you masturbate to, and this wasn't it. <laughs> he was like, "Well, I'm not masturbating. It's not like I'm looking at it and masturbating. No, like." And she's like, "Oh, you're just making love to it, right?" But Dave says that there, and she goes, "Why are you doing this in here after we just had great sex?" And Dave goes, "Do you remember what he said?" No. He said something along the lines of like, "It was great for you." But for me, it was like surviving war. Surviving, yeah. It was like surviving wartime, I think he said. Right. And it's like, oh. So that's not his definition. His his and her, like what you find out in this instance, and I think this is a bigger issue. Some people's instances of intimacy are not the other person's version of intimacy. Very, very true. And what he was trying to do was uh, what a lot of people do. And this is getting into like more of an unfiltered bachelor talk, which is like yeah, I think I mean, kind of what I love how to, how to do these episodes. It, it touches on the on the on the thing of pleasing your partner, partner pleasing, right? But it all it touches on that and on um, comfort zones. Com- comfort what? Comfort zones. Comfort zones. Because the issue is, Dave went so far out of his comfort zone in an effort to please his partner. It's partner pleasing, bro. It's all it is. So partner pleasing will pull you out of your comfort zone, like at the at the baseline level. But what partner pleasing does is it not only it not only pulls you out of your comfort zone. What it also does is you become resentful to that other person. Well, what would you call it when you're and just talking f- about what each other likes sexually, and you're just trying to be like, "Well, I like this, and you like this, but maybe we should try this and see how it works with us." He, was, he so so the thing with Dave, like so, separate from this episode, is. His sexual regression right. refuses to let him not just come out of his comfort zone, but also not fully be um, – oh, god damn it. What's the word I'm looking like for? Like in the moment? Like not fully be trustful of his partner. That's – that make, oh, yeah. That comes through he, real he clear. Has, he has like – and it's not that he doesn't love Allie. No, no. He, he loves absolutely her to loves death. Him. What his insecurities – almost prevent him from fully trusting like he loves her but he doesn't think that she can handle well his cock right well doesn't think his masculinity like whatever way that he presents that well i mean his masculinity is clearly tied up in the appearance of his penis and this right which is which is the whole any any, his whole ambiance is demeaning of his penis true but also any guy who literally their entire definition of masculinity or even just their masculinity revolves around their dick that guy's got something wrong and needs to do a little self-evaluation a little soul searching yeah he's got it. like yeah so it, it 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 comes down to this this whole like mistrust issue so they're yelling back and forth and they're like hey what's going on like why is this happening and dave yells out the i've got a fucked up reason, dick yeah she goes what and he goes i've got a fucked up dick and she goes no you don't and he goes You've never Clearly, seen. you haven't seen my dick. And she goes, <laughs> yeah, of course I have. He goes, no, I've actually been making it kind of my second job to make sure you never actually see my dick. And, like, that's a part of this, too. Is like he goes into the fact that, like, he makes sure that, like, between lighting and, like, ang- and the angles that she's looking at, that she never actually sees his dick full on, head on. And she gets mad and she just storms out of the bathroom and goes into his room and she starts putting her clothes on. And this is where I think she's in the wrong. Because he said something really, really personal. And I know that she's sitting there like, oh, he's just, no, of course not. Of course, I've seen his dick at some point. But, like, he was clearly opening up to her at that point, And she dismissed it. And she tries to just start leaving. And, and I think trust is the wrong word. I think being vulnerable. He was never vulnerable. Yes, very true. I think that's, that's the right word I was looking for. He's ne- He was never vulnerable until the time yeah. where she's right. So, and, and and again, I'm going to go back to what I talk about a lot of on the, on the Unfiltered Bachelor. I, I mean, always that's, ta- whole, that's kind of a part of this. That's what it's supposed to be. Of course. You know? And I love how it, it, this on this episode that's about intercourse, it intercourses. Uh, hey. Uh, I like but, how on this episode about intercourse, we it ta- fucks. The episode fucks. Right. First of all. <laughs> um, but what, what, I, what I've talked about before is how everybody looks. A lot of people are in comfortable companionships. And a lot of people strive for inspirational companionships. 
And I had Steve Maeda, who's um, he's an Austin men development coach. He's a dating coach for a lot of people here in Austin. Also, a lot of people worldwide. He's a dating coach. Yeah, you've told and me he about talked it. about how I was like, inspiration drives great relationships. He's like, inspiration doesn't. Desperation does. And in this instance hmm. is a great example of when desperation drives you to, to be inspired. So you're talking about the fact that she's getting ready. She's going. She's leaving. She's mad. And she's like, you're clearly not trying to talk to me or anything. And, right. then, and then Dave's like, no, 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 no. Stop. Stop. I actually want to talk about his this desperation reveals his vulnerability. Okay. Which makes sense because then and it, and it does work out well because then Allie closes the door and she's like, all right. Turns on the lights, closes the door. And goes, all right. Let's see it. And he's like, Wait, what? No, I'm not going to say. Oh, and by the way, like something that we missed here, um, like he's tries describing it to her and he goes like you know i've got a hang on what is it called again did you write this down no he goes i've got hyper uh spot i got hyperspadias like three, one in 300 men have it and it's where you know your pee holes in the wrong spot and then like i also uh i had a tangled urethra so they had to go in right, and they urethra. had to untangle that and then there were like these little black flecks on there and they went and they removed those but when they removed one of them they removed it too far so that's why i think the hyperspadies don't always have two pee holes. I think he was saying that like he had an extra thing that caused a second pee hole. Right. And so like he's like going on and on and in in detail describing this thing, which by the way is clearly his biggest insecurity and fear. And so she goes, okay. She closes the door. She turns on the light and she goes, let's see it. He's like, no, no, I can't show it. I'm I'm smaller than a mouse right now. (laughs) (laughs) And she goes, well, no, no. Before that, he goes, no, no, I can't. No, I can't show it to you. You can't, you cannot see this. It is not good. And she just goes, Dave, I love you. I don't, I want to see it. And honestly, I think I, she goes, I know it will make me feel better to see it. And I think it'll make you feel better for me to see it too. And then he goes, babe, I'm like smaller than a mouse right now. (laughs) And she literally just goes, Puts her hand on his, just like cups his junk. Right on the Johnson. Just cups it. And, just, and so, so hang on, I want to get this right. Did he talk about can of worms? What, she, yeah, what? he goes, it looks like a big old can of worms. <laughs> but she just, and he goes, I get small as a mouse right now. And she looks him in the eyes and she cups his dick and then goes, okay, that was easy. Right. <laughs> now he's hard. <laughs> right. And then she pulls down his underwear and she looks at it and she goes, huh. Okay. That's a great boner. Right. Which I know it sounds silly and especially like when we're talking over, but it was also clearly a really important moment and a really sweet moment that they share together. Cause I also think this is the first time Dave has let anyone see his, other than Els see and Mike. Dick in the light. See, I think he's let Els and Mike. From the way they were talking about it at lunch, it kind of seemed like they actually had the guys it. or whatever, but yeah. like but like someone that he's chick, intimate see, with, see someone that he loves in the light. Yeah. So I think it's a huge moment for Dave. It's all, not just all the, seeing the, the dick in the light and again, accepting it. Oh, vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. This is the first. So I, this all ties back to when he was a young kid. He was not vulnerable. I have AIDS. <laughs> right. Why would you put that defense up? Right. Especially like it, as a that tween. Comment. Well, a tween. That's getting around. Yeah. Them, all the motherfuckers in middle school know you got AIDS at this point. He's got the AIDS. You got the A. He got the hippies. Uh, Oops. Uh, but this is him, and this is. I think this is a great point. Like I didn't even think about this until I brought it up right now. But being vulnerable as a male to somebody that you're intimate with, I don't often think. How hard is it as a guy, man? First of all, like to be this vulnerable with somebody. So he clearly loved. He says he loved. Like he keeps saying. I love you. Like, even when they made love the first time or fucked the first time, I love you, I love you, I love you. All you hear is I love you, I love you, I love you. Well, he even and says... And you can I love a person to death. Oh, yeah. But he even says, like, when she's trying to get him to show her the dick, he's like, I love you, but you cannot see this. And he's not saying, like, I, can't, like, I won't let you. He's, like, saying, like, it, it will wreck your life to see this. It's wrecked mine. Like, It'll like, wreck yours, Yeah, too. he's, like, trying to, like, he's... Because he loves her, he doesn't want her to have to look at it, you know? Right. And... I, I love the the vulnerability factor though. Like I, oh, I'm yeah. gonna keep coming back to this because like that's well, almost it's important, and that's kind of the point of. I think of that's Dickie. almost the point of this this episode. I think it's kind of the point of Dicky in general. He takes real things and things that are important, but he wraps them in a layer of comedy so that they're easily digestible. Right. 
And I think that's exactly what this episode is. It's like eating some, but with vulnerability. some medicine. You know some medicine tastes bad. So a uh, spoonful of sugar. It makes the medicine go down. Mary Poppins was hot. Shout outs to Mary Dickey. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, yeah, they had this great uh, moment, man. And it's honestly, it's it, I, I loved it. I thought it was a really good moment. It's the, it's the focal point of the episode when the, the trauma hits its hardest point and the drama hits its hardest point and it peaks and mm-hmm. you realize, like, you realize as much as Dickey realizes. You realize with Dickey, ain't shit. Like, she's like, it ain't shit about it. Like, doesn't fucking matter. I'm, but with, you, I'm with you. At the same time, I got the feeling that he was like, he's still very insecure about it. Of course. In the sense that I think he's sitting there and he's kind of like, does she really think that? Or is she just saying that to make me feel better? Either way, he's riding with it for the, for the meantime. Well, but the thing is, cause then we come, cause then it goes to commercial and then we come back and just the way he's lying on that couch, staring at the TV was just that like forlorn look in his face. Made me think like he was kind of going through like, oh my god, did she really mean it? Does she really like my dick? Or like, did I actually freak her out? Did I was I right to never show her this? But that it's, did I make it's, a mistake. It's the insecurity, absolutely. Right? Like it's, it's like you know, you remember the first time if you ever date a girl and you have sex, and then you come back and you're hanging out by yourself, maybe a date nay or two. Oh, dude, it's the most terrifying time. It's the wor- It's the weirdest time because. You're like, was the sex good? Are we going to have sex again? Are we going to do this again? It's like you go through all the motions in your head, right? Like, Bro, absolutely. I, I, know, I know I'm not the only one to go through this. No, no, no. You sit there and you dissect everything. You man. dissect it. And it's the worst. It's, you know what's even worse is uh, it's even worse when it's a relationship there that happens or like a friendship that's maybe going to the next level and that happens. It's It makes it so much worse because there's even more on the line then. Right. Like a one night stand. I, I was, like, and now, well, now I'm not know. just talking about just one night stand. Like somebody you're dating, you oh, have yeah. sex the first time. You not hang out for the next two days or day, and, but but like you obviously, and you don't get that text. You have a text. Neither one you have texted yet. Which, by the way, girls, I don't know if you know this, but like that's why we're not texting. We are terrified. We are terrified, just like you are. We are so fucking scared. I love the like. There's this whole thing out there now that like, oh well, girls are afraid and men are just. Well, I'm sorry. You know what? Let me change that. Women are afraid and men are just. If I'm gonna say girls, I should say boys. If I'm gonna say men, I should say women. You so, the fuck women are man. afraid and men are just sitting there and they're just like, oh, he's not getting in touch with me because he just doesn't care or because like, oh, he's off to his next conquest or whatever. No, we're terrified. We are just, just as scared. Just we are just as in our own heads. We are just as, did I just fuck this all up? Right. And I think that's, so I, re, I go to that because that's the closest I can come to thinking about how Dickie was on the couch when you just described this, right? Like he's going kind of, he's watching TV, but he's obviously like, which is what makes this next scene somehow even sweeter. It, it's the best. But so, so Dickie's on the couch is a little like, what the fuck? And she calls him, right? She texts. Yeah, she calls him. Hey, come outside. Yeah. And he's like, mm, he's like, huh? She's like, come to the garage. I got something for you. And he goes off to the garage. And How there's just this big white sheet. And he goes, what's this? And she's like, I got a surprise for you. And she pulls, uh, she, she unsheets, she unveils a fucking milking table. It's like these pieces of plywood put together with like a <laughs> random pillow on there and just a hole cut in the middle of it. And he's like, <laughs> I don't know if he's clearly like, he goes, not a sand goes, down table either. Like no, this table no, no, no. is like, he goes, did you get, did you like hire trade jobs to do this? <laughs> like, awesome. How did you get this done so fast? And this is clearly the next day. Oh, yeah. This is not the next night, actually. Yeah, the next night. But like, and then she looks at him. She goes, so I think I figured it out. You know, obviously, you know, she goes like, so the reason like like, you like this porn is because, you know, it's just the penis and the girl. So it's like your biggest insecurity. And that's why you like it so much. And da da da. So I made you one. And he's like, wait, what? She's like, yeah. So, you know, climb on up there. And, you know, I'm going to get underneath. And, you know, I'll do my part. And he just. And he just gives her a really sweet kiss, which by the way, like she's in the middle of being like, yeah, so I'll just, you know, like jerk you off or whatever. And, you know, and we'll do my thing. Uh, we'll do, we did my thing last night. So I thought we'd do your thing tonight. And, and he just gives her, her this really sweet kiss. Yes. It was the most intimate. He's like, it was so fucking sweet. Wh- it was a kiss and then followed up by, I love you so much. I think. Well, also, and I'm going to, I'm going to eat. Well, your ass. well, well, he goes, and I, I love you so much. That I'm gonna eat your ass. 
I'm gonna lick that booty. <laughs> he goes, mandatory strip time right now. And she, oh, no, no, she goes, yes, I love you so much that I'm gonna milk you. And she's, she's like, like what? what? He's a like, mandatory strip time. I'm gonna eat your ass right now. And she goes, uh, well, I don't think it's like milking. I think it's more like when what? the like, gophers like, like licking the no, like a gerbil, like the lick, gerbil's licking the water, licking the water. And he's like, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> doing it. And so like they're in the middle of this. So in this garage. here's the most beautiful moment. And it's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful moments because she is. Has her ass hanging out over where the, the hole would she, be. She's sticking her booty to, into the hole. And Dave he's, is ready. He has his tongue out, ready to eat it, the booty and like you groceries. Hear, and, it, and it sounds like a gerbil singing, what a girl wants, what a girl needs. It is so funny. Oh, yeah. It's great. The 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 hype. Yeah. And Dave's sticking his tongue out. He's getting closer. He's getting ready closer. to eat that. And then the garage door opens. And then you hear. <laughs> <laughs> and this is. And fucking Mike is in his car, just light shining on these motherfuckers, and clearly uh, Allie's covering up her, her tits and shit, like and ass just hanging just out over the terrified table. Terrified, looking at Mike. Dave is naked underneath the table. Mike ready is, to eat the booty, and he's Mike just, is a straight deer in headlights staring at them, and they're a deer in headlights staring right the fuck back at him. And Dave goes, "Oh, hey, dude." <laughs> <laughs> and then Mike is like, "Okay, I'll just I'll just park in the street." <laughs> and then presses a button to to relieve the garage and for it to and go back. That's down. the end of the episode. It was so amazing. We're gonna guys. have to start rating these episodes. You know this, right? Like right now. So let's go well, through the. Before we rate, how do you compare this one out of the three? Which is your favorite? This one's now my favorite. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with Everyone you more. has gotten better. Uh, I, yes. Yes. The first one was my favorite until I rewatched the second one actually with you and kind of broke it down in my head where it's not a, like I'm a huge Dicky fan. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> ah, like a penis. Uh, but I'm a huge little Dicky fan. And so when I didn't see he was a star of the episode, it bothered me at first until I realized that episode wasn't about him. Second, second episode, not about him. Yeah, absolutely. This episode is even better than the first and the second one because it's the most vo- so far it's the most vulnerable episode. I would say my- So if if I did if I did this in, in so this I is- don't know about a rating but maybe a ranking. I mean, uh, yeah, fuck it, whatever. For me right now, I mean, it's three, we're going to have one. we're going to have 10 episodes and it's going to be very hard to rank at that point. Uh, so I'll I'll go with first episode 7.7 7. out of 10. Yeah. I'll go with we'll go with 8.2 on the second one. And this one's like an 8.4. Maybe 8.5. So I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to knock down to like a 7.5. Okay. Just because it, it tried it tried packing a lot into one episode. It did. It did. It, it did a great thing. It did. It a did great but thing. I think it tried packing too much into one episode. Okay. Um, second episode, I'll give an 8, 8.2, 8.3. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll go eight point six on this one. Really? All right. I'm yeah. not even mad at that. I would. It's it hasn't broken nine range. No. no but no, no. I mean, my and I'm God, a huge little dicky. I want to give him. A, like, it, oh, absolutely. I want to give him a ten. I'm looking for every reason to give him a ten. Just man, I was blown away by how fucking funny it was, and how much heart was in it, man. Yeah. It. It. it, it and the reason that I, I think a lot of it is a lot of heartfelt moments, but it's also this is the most so far. I do a dating podcast, and this is the most relatable episode to like dating that like you can get to because it has all those vulnerable peaks, especially with how, sex. I don't know how relatable it is for women, but as a guy, I think it's relatable. With it hits women. every fucking note. Man. I think it's relatable, especially that that moment that Emma and fucking Allie have. And oh and, yeah, well the part that I like is showing like the guys talking about it because I think. A stereotype is that guys are all sitting there like, oh, yeah, man, so last night I, I fucked this girl, my peepees in and her. I bent her over, and da-da-da. No, no, no. That's, it's not that. It, yeah, we're talking about sex and relationships. And Literally, and most of stuff. us are like little dicky. We're but like, it's, we're talking about the insecure parts of it, mm-hmm. and we're trying to get advice and support from our friends. It's not... It's not like the typical locker room like, oh, yeah, did you bang that? Yeah, I fucking hit that. No, it's like, guys, so like this happened and like, what do sure I do? What the fuck do I do? Yeah. Like, and I really love that it pointed that out. I think most of us are like a little dick at the end of the day. Man. I think most of us are just, you know what it is? It's most of us are people and this show is just Dave is a it person. Humanizes. It humanizes. Hell yeah. 
And what, one thing I really liked about this episode that we didn't get in one or in two, we kind of got opposite ends in one and two. I think we got a lot of stories of the side characters and a lot of Dave's story in this. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was an uneven amount. I think right. this was the most even we've had the side characters and the Dave story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, Dave was the majority of one. Uh, the side characters Were took the over part two. two. But, like, the Emma had, was a, the had supporting a good amount cast in this one. supported in this episode. Uh, Gata, Els, and uh, Mike had a good amount at the at the lunch. But then Gata and Mike had their own thing, too. I think it did a really I good job. I thought that was badass. Yeah. I thought that was finally badass where they kind of separated off. You know what else I'm really enjoying? What's that? How much they're making Allie a main character. And not like a uh, main character because she's the main character's girlfriend. Like She's her own character. She's her own person. And I'm really enjoying that. She has a whole bunch of scenes without Dave. Absolutely. And and I, 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 I love the series, man. <laughs> Huge fan of the series. I mean, dude, I was excited for this week's episode. I, like, I'm even more excited for next week's. I am. I need to see a preview from next week. I feel like it's out there, but I haven't seen it yet. I don't want to anymore. I, I don't. I do, but I don't. If I if I don't and I watch next week's episode, fine. Yeah, absolutely. Just because, like, I will say one thing that they're doing really well is, so I can't watch a lot of movie previews anymore. Um, what absolutely ruined it for me was us with Jordan Peele. I watched all the trailers because I was like, oh, Jordan Peele, like he's not going to give too much away. He Literally, the away. big twist at the end is given away in the trailers, which isn't Peele's fault. He's not the one making the trailers. The studio is. But so nowadays, like if a movie's coming out that I want to see, I'll watch the first trailer and that's it. But the trailers for Dave, they've been given they've been given like some jokes away, but they have been giving the big jokes away and they have been giving the majority of them I, away. So here is my big takeaway so far, and I'll be quite honest. Yeah. The I felt like the preview, the previews that I watched, they mm-hmm. gave away a lot of the first episode. True I will yeah, I'll agree there. And like so when I rewatched it, I was like I was waiting for some new jokes to happen. Yep. And some new jokes didn't happen, but I still laughed with it because it was still funny. Mm-hmm. As we get deeper with this, like these what the fuck moments are catching me off guard, dude. And that's, I think that's what makes it better. And I'm better gonna start me. calling them the subtitle moments because, like, you almost have to have your subtitles on so that, like, oh, when you're laughing through a joke, you can see, like, wait, 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 what was that? And go back, you know. It's it's taken over, man. It is so good. They're amazing. That's great. And they don't take away from the show itself. No, which is also good. They add. It's not like when you're trying to be like, oh, I gotta find every Easter egg. It's like, no, no, no. There's no Easter eggs. Just nope. Watch it again. Yep. Don't look for anything in the corner. Like, you won't miss it. Just, just listen. Something I found out over this past week, because, okay, one thing I did look up, didn't find anything out because I didn't, like, do too much research on it. Uh huh. Do you think Dave in real life has the hyperstiz, the hyperpiece? I, I, he has something going on with his pee pee. You think he has something going on? Like I don't know what it, I don't know if it's that, but I know he's talked about having like circumcision gone wrong. Maybe. Well, he, he's talked about being circumcised. He's talked well, about he's having a small a small pee pee. He has talked about he only lights his like he only has certain lights on when he has sex. See, I didn't know that that was a real part of it because that's the other thing about the show. That was the I thing I love about this. How much is you remember, real? So, so if you if you watch the part where he's fucking Allie for the first time, yeah, when they come back from the he studio, he specifically says like, "Oh, and I'm gonna have the light over here." I'm have, so he puts the light a certain way. He literally makes backlighting for himself, right? Yeah. So he talks. I definitely noticed that. He talks about this though openly. Yeah. Like he talks about like I put the I definitely put the light a certain way. He's like, I don't think a female has ever seen my penis like full on. Do you think Molly has? Probably. Molly well, Allie. I'm the more I watch, the more I think Allie's Molly. Molly Alley? Molly Alley? Oh, my God. Dude, that is... That music You are so waiting for that plot twist. Not even that plot twist. I'm just like... It's... That's... That music video is one of the best music videos I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. Of course. And it's not like, you know, crazy ridiculous like some Fall Out Boy ones get or like super silly like some early Panic ones were. Um, If you can't tell, I clearly white who likes... Uh, emo punk music emo punk emo, emo punk, punk, rock, punk yeah. emo but um th- it's so like if you haven't se- have you broken down molly on this no, podcast I might, we, we, maybe we should need time. to break this down um should i even mention the music video here or just save it for i mean just this, this kind of so it's literally just like it's uh it starts with some piano playing some really nice piano and uh it's dave getting ready getting a suit on with a room full of guys like hey you nervous and like clearly he's like oh shut up come on, let's just go do this. what are we where are we getting at 
I was just going to say, and then he goes to, and then he's standing at the wedding. And then the bride walks past him, and he's not the groom. He's attending the wedding. Right. And it is... One of the most heartfelt music videos It is such a beautiful heartbreak of a song video. It was so well done. Yeah. I, I just it blows me away every time I watch it. Yeah, I, go look up Molly uh, by Lil Dicky. But I, I, what Jeff is is alluding to is that maybe we we see Ali be that Molly character in the future. We don't know yet. We're not there. We we have no idea. The lyrics in Molly make me wonder if this if Ali is Molly. Yeah, you know? maybe maybe. But but he so to return back to the dick point, he does talk about. <laughs> He does talk about. <laughs> <laughs> he does talk about putting his dick in a certain light. Rit said, "That's interesting." So he talks about putting his dick in a certain light. He talks about he has a small dick. He talks about like he's very insecure about his dick. To be okay. quite honest, he's talking about this. So I don't know if he's got like a. I don't know if he has this. I don't know if he has a hyper P, but who knows? Maybe he's got a fourth testicle. Or fifth. Uh, one thing I want to add to this, dude, that I did tell you uh, is Gata is his hype man. Yes, which makes me super happy. Gata is – so those that don't know, if you've ever seen a little Dicky tour, if you've ever seen him South By, or if you've ever seen him you know, any music <laughs> Not fast, South By this or, year. Yeah, rest in peace to South By. But if you've ever seen Dicky per- perform um, live, regardless of the festival or, or if you've just seen him on a show, his hype man is Gata. Which, for the last like four or five years. So something that I learned when just doing a little research on Dickie this last week, um, something I didn't know is he's always wanted to be. So he when he started rapping, when he was working for the law firm, and he started rap. Well, no, no, he was marketing in the law firm. Oh, yeah. Um, And so when he started rapping, he wanted to use it to get to where he's at now. Which was, you know, use it to become a uh, actor, be a writer, and stand up. Yeah. Um, and then he fell in love with his rap, and he'll never leave it. But so, I would really, I really like the idea that then his hype man isn't just like his rap hype man; it's his hype man. Gata's still a part of Lil Dicky, not a part of the rapper Lil Dicky. If that, does that make sense? Like it's not just that Gate is there to get people excited for a show. It's Gate is there because he pumps Dave up too, and I like that Dave is bringing like bringing him into parts uh to like these parts of his life. Right. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, I, I like how he how he included him. Yeah, and also like, dude, Gate is great. I would love to see him in more stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Dave, oh, yeah. Uh, Dave talked about this on, uh, I was watching recently, uh, he went back on Sway, you know, right. Sway in the morning, and uh, where he, he, hands, where he does a fucking freestyle and hands him a cactus. <laughs> uh, but so this one, he didn't freestyle. He was like, I'm just Dave, I'm just Dave this week. It's kind of like the difference between Childish Gambino and Donald Glover. Right. Yeah. And he does that. So he separated that. and, and Which is smart. And so some people, like some people called in like, we want to see you do freestyle. And even Sway was like. Nah, my man, he's not gonna do a freestyle this week. He's not coming in for this, dude. Good on Sway for that. You know, he's like, he's just, he's just being Dave this week. Like, yeah, man, he's not a little dicky. Like, call back, Nick, call back next time he's here. Like, nice. He ain't doing a freestyle, but uh, so you talked about Gata then. But Dicky, Dicky was talking about. He, so they were like, how'd you get all the actors? And he was like, well, you know, I got Taco, obviously who plays Els. He's like, I got Taco. Taco really just didn't do a whole bunch of acting stuff. I felt like I got him. He was really good. Dude, he was a voice actor on Grand Theft Auto Five. I didn't know this. That's fucking cool. <laughs> right? Uh, and he's like, I got Gata, who was my hype man. I, like, I just kind of figured like these are people. He's like, I did this show with people that I'd really just want to hang out with. Which works for it, – it gives such great chemistry to a show. Yes. That's what happened. Uh, so like I said, the producer Jeff something or another, Schultzman, I think maybe. Schaeferman, maybe? Uh, Jeff Schaefer, I think. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but he was also a producer on the league, and it was literally just like they took six comedians who were all just hilarious and had a good time with each other and put them together. That's, that's, and it made a great that's show. That's kind of what Dave is, it looked, it's has done. Brilliant. It's, it's beautiful. Episode three in the books, though, man. Dude, three episodes in, and this is like my top three FX or FFX FX shows? shows, yeah. Including Sun. Top four. <laughs> yeah. No, top three. 
I love legit, but Dave edged it out. Because legit, I can just watch a stand up. Right, right, right. You know? So, like, I'd say right now, it probably goes Sons, The League, Dave, Dick, Dick, Legit. Yeah. And, dude, if Dave keeps going the way it does, and depending how long it goes, it might edge out the league. It might. It might yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Hey. Woo! Yeah! Woo-hoo. Which, by the way, if this upsets anyone from the league, please contact me and we'll go out for a beer and we'll just talk it out. You know? Uh, what was the email again? Uh, um, Don Cheadle's driveway at lilldicky 2com <laughs> It's for the it's hackers. Hackers. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Jeff, thank you for coming on for another week, man. We'll 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 do this again, episode four next Fine. week. If you guys love this episode, please reach out unfilteredbachelor gmail dot com or just f- feel free to shoot a message. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can f- find me, Money Blake. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, just Money Blake. Whether Jeff, anybody, if they want to follow you, they want to follow you on Facebook or anything like that. Don Cheadle's driveway. A uh, little dicky too. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's Jeffrey Madel, M A D L, on Facebook. If you want to follow, I've him. got a Twitter and an Insta that I never check. Right. Like literally never. So don't try so that. Don't follow him. <laughs> you know what? If you want to follow me. Talk to Blake, and we will all go out, have a beer, hang out, and if we're cool, then we'll become Facebook and digital friends. Right. Let's, yeah. Oh, Jeff, never mind coronavirus. Fuck you all. Jeff wants to start slow. Oh, wait, no. Bring a hazmat no, suit. No, I'm just old, <laughs> and I like like hanging out with people in real life. I love podcasts and things like this, but like, hey, let's also be people. <laughs> you know? On that note, follow the show. We are on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Nice. How long on Spotify? Stop it. I've been on here for like two months now. Fuck yeah, dude. Start of the new year. I do Google Music, so I didn't know. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's big shit. I want Google too. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on Google Music and I listen to you. Well, how else do I follow the show? Uh, <laughs> everybody follow the show. Thank you so much for showing love. If you guys love these episodes, the little dicky episodes, please tune into these. Uh, if you want to check out some of the dating episodes, um, if you guys are fans of MMA, uh, just continue to tune in. I appreciate everybody who tuned to the channel, Unfiltered Badger. Um, thank you for tuning in, whether it's morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time you listen to this. And until the next time, we'll see you. Bye, I'm Blake. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, I'm Blake. Peace.